So this rather nondescript box, which I clutch in my pale, trembling hands, is the Xperia L4, Sony's fresh new budget blower for 2020. And compared with last year's Xperia L3, it boasts more premium design, enhanced camera tech, and lots more lovely bits. But the good news is that the price tag steers pleasingly low. This finely crafted handset can be yours for just 169 British pounds. So the question is, is the Xperia L4 a worthy budget smartphone which deserves a place in that mobile-shaped hole in your pocket? Well, I'm going to give it a full unboxing now, tour of that hardware and software, giving you everything you need to know about the Sony Xperia L4. And for more than the latest greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first up, let's get the little blighter on out and also check out exactly what else you get in the box, which I'm assuming is basically just the charge and plug and cable and probably an instruction manual. And indeed, that is exactly what you get. But my day has already been brightened because you do actually get a bit of Type-C USB action in here rather than that god-awful micro-USB huzzah. Yeah, definitely the sooner that dies a death, the better. Right, so now let's check out the actual phone itself. Now, of course, in terms of the construction, the actual materials used, there's been no real shake-up here for the Xperia L4 compared with previous generations is once again of course a plastic handset as you'd expect at this sub 200 pound price point but as you can see there the xperia l series now enjoys that same gorgeous elongated 21 by 9 finish that sony brought to its mid-range and premium flagship phones last year so that just helped to set the xperia l4 apart from other budget smartphones while the overall design is fairly simple maybe even slightly austere here on this black model you can pick it up in a blue finish if you'd prefer so yeah it may not be a bit of a stunner the xperia l4 but it's definitely functional design as you can see there there, the camera chassis perfectly level with the rest of the phone as well it doesn't jut out or anything like that I'm just seeing if we've got any power in there already yep looks like we do great so I'll be able to get it all set up and then we'll take a full-on tour of that hardware and software the camera tech everything else you need to know as well and unfortunately uh, one thing worth pointing out is the power button is actually separate from that edge mounted fingerprint sensor once again here on the Xperia L4 just like some of last year's uh, Sony Xperia it's a bit of a shame I'd rather have it integrated into that uh, edge mounted fingerprint sensor it feels a bit messy to have it separate but here ho minor grumble it's the usual easy pull out sim tray here on the Xperia L4 and as you can see there the space for either a dual sim setup or a single sim and then a micro SD memory card of up to 512 gigs to boost the onboard 64 gigs of storage. All right, setup is all done, so now we can start actually exploring this little butte. Now, one of the drawbacks for the Xperia L4 is it is unfortunately still running the older Android 9 rather than the latest Android 10. No idea when it's going to get an update. It hopefully won't be too long. Well, that does unfortunately mean that uh, you don't get the likes of the dark mode, you don't get the swipe navigations, and some of those other features that I really like from Android 10. But it is definitely great to see the Xperia L4, the most budget Sony mobile, rocking that same super skinny 21 by 9 finish as the flagship Xperia 1 Mark II. It means that even though it's a 6.2 inch handset, it's actually pleasingly comfortable to clutch. You will of course still struggle to reach up towards the top of that screen when it's in this standard mode. But the good news is there is a nifty one-handed mode which you can quickly activate from the good old side sense menu. Just give this little icon here a tap and everything is nice and shrunken down and much, much easier to use. And as you can see, you can also pull down the notifications bar from anywhere on screen as well, which definitely helps out. And that elongated screen is also ideal for multitasking as well. So again, open up the side sense bar and you'll spy this multi-window tool. And this just allows you to open up the two apps side by side. Also, uh, remembers your previous configurations as well. So for instance, if you like a bit of YouTube and Chrome simultaneously, you can definitely get that on the go. And as you can see, you can pull up the little dividers. So you've just got your video playing in a little nook up top. And then you've got plenty of space for your bit of Chrome action down here. Perfect stuff. And as you can see there, the default wallpaper of Sony isn't exactly the most exciting. Just a bit of horizon action there. Uh, but you can quickly and easily change that up. There we go. A bit of geeky anime action again. That's much better. Now, it's a 6.2 inch IPS panel here on the Sony Xperia L4. 720p resolution. It's not full HD, but it's pretty standard for smartphones around the 150 to 200 pound price point and as you can see there absolutely fine for your shows your movies and everything on the go despite the fact it is a spacious 6.2 inch and of course with that 21 by 9 aspect ratio as well means that the xperia l4 is well suited to cinematic extravaganzas great stuff so you won't get any letterboxing basically with any movies that support that ratio but you will notice of course up here on the top a bit of notch action which is something that you don't normally get on sony xperia smartphones because normally they've got a big fat bar up there up top uh, so that does intrude ever so slightly on your uh, watching experience as for the audio experience well the built-in speakers aren't exactly great here on the xperia l4 i say speakers it's just a single mono speaker mounted here on the bottom edge we'll just boost up the volume here Release review unit maybe an update will be happening 
happening in the next week or two to add that functionality if I managed to get it working. As you can hear there, not exactly fantastic sound quality on that top volume. It's probably just about loud enough to cut through any sort of background clamour in a noisy kitchen or whatever, but it does sound pretty tinny and gritty and ugh. The good news is though you do actually get a 3.5mm jack as you do on all of Sony's new 2020 smartphones. It's bringing back that headphone jack big, which is great to see. And of course you've got the usual Bluetooth 5 support on there as well. And in better news, while it might be old Android here on the Xperia L4, at least Sony has shoved in a good bit of dual band Wi-Fi action and NFC support as well, which is actually pretty rare to find both of those at this sort of price point. So I'll partially forgive you, Sony. Now as for the performance, it is unfortunately a very basic MediaTek MT6762 chipset packed inside the Sony Xperia L4, and that's bolstered by a very modest three gigabytes of RAM, which is definitely the minimum you want dealing with Android, even older Android 9. I took the liberty of running a bit of Geekbench 5 for any benchmark enthusiasts out there. I know there are plenty of you out there. 151 single core, 878 multi core, so not particularly impressive scores as you'd expect. And I uh, have noticed a fair few little stammers and stutters as I've been sort of flicking through. Occasionally, apps take a, a little second or two to sort of load up. But you know what? You'll be able to do a good bit of media streaming on your YouTube, your Netflix, whatever web browser messaging, all that sort of thing is absolutely fine. And you can do the split screen and that works absolutely fine as well. Streaming a video while browsing the web, it can handle it. You just won't want to be playing a bit of PUBG Mobile or anything like that on the Xperia L4. As for the battery, well, it's a 3580 milliamp cell stuffed inside the Xperia L4, so not the biggest around. But remember, the Xperia L4 does use that energy efficient MediaTek chipset, and it's on the 720p red screen as well, so that won't drain a massive amount of juice when it's turned on. So hopefully, the Xperia L4 should see you through a full day, helped along by the likes of the adaptive battery tech as well, which just helps to limit the power drain from less, less, fre less frequently used apps. I st really struggled with that one, Jesus. Unfortunately, you don't seem to get the adaptive charging uh, tech on here, which basically helps to prevent overcharging when you leave your smartphone plugged in all night long. Um, but again, it's a budget offering, so that's to be expected. Well, and before I forget as well, absolutely no complaints with that edge-mounted fingerprint sensor, other than the fact that it is, of course, separate from that power button. Uh, as you can see, they're nice and accurate. You do, it's not the nippiest sensor around you are sort of win half a second or so when you tap it for the screen to boot up. Not exactly the worst performance in the world. Nice and easy to find without having to like grow up around or anything like that. Good stuff. All of which fun and joy brings us onto that triple lens rear camera tech. And what you get here is a 13 megapixel primary lens f2.0 aperture backed by a 5 megapixel ultra wide angle lens and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. Now while of course the more premium Sony Xperia smartphones, the Xperia 1 Mark II and all that, it's all about the camera tech. Here on the Xperia L4 I'd expect quite a basic camera performance in general. Uh, but looks like so far the focus and the shutter action nice and swift which is great to see. The Xperia Auto modes generally pretty reliable stuff and uh, you've got a selection of different scenes that you can select from manually if you like. Although sadly that seems to be all of the manual controls that you actually have. If you tap mode you see there's no proper full on pro mode that uh, you sometimes have on these Sony smartphones. You can't mess around with like, so the ISO levels, the white balance. What you can do at any point though is swap between the primary lens and the ultra wide angle lens with a quick tap of this bad boy here. As you can see it just gives you a more pulled out view, quite handy for those stunning vistas and group shots. And you've also got a bit of portrait mode action as well, it just adds a bit of a bokeh effect to the background. Uh, so just get your subject in shot. Gonna move a little bit closer. There you go, get Totoro with a nice bit of blurry background action, help them stand out. There he is, the sexy ball of fluff. And if you wanted to shoot a bit of video action with Totoro, just quick tap here and you're into the video modes and you can shoot up to full HD resolution video, you can't shoot at 4K of course, that would be quite surprising at this sort of price point. And if it's selfie o'clock then you can swap around to that 8 megapixel front facing camera, nice and nippy uh, as you can see there, take a quick snap with that. And you also have the portrait selfie uh, option as well. And this adds a whole bunch of different beauty effects, you can slim down your face, you can boost your eyes right up to Bambi anime proportions. Processing time takes a little while, let's see what <laughs> horrors this has produced. <laughs> yep, that is proper nightmare fuel right there. Thankfully you can knock all that stuff off uh, like so and then you can just leave it so you've got a nice bit of uh, blurry bokeh effect if that's all you really want. Absolute stunner as usual and the process of time may be quite long but it looks like it's done a really good effect of sort of keeping me sharp while blurring out everything behind me. And there you have it, that in a nutshell is Sony's fresh new Xperia L4 budget smartphone ready for you in 2020. It's actually available right now so you can go out and get it from the usual suspects here in the UK or direct from Sony. And while the performance is pretty basic, you don't get any particular frills or flair of the actual design. I love the 21 by 9 finish, something that you won't get with other budget smartphones. The media chops seem absolutely fine despite the fact that it's only a 720p display for this 
this sort of price point, it'll do the job nicely. Nice sort of reasonably punchy colors and everything. Good audio chops on this thing. And the battery life should hopefully hold up well too. So are you tempted by the Xperia L4? Have you been using the Xperia L4? Definitely be great to hear all of your lovely thoughts and comments down below. Please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell. Have yourselves a lovely week, people. Cheers, everyone. Love you.